Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. We had a great week. We just returned from the Napa Institute, of course, in Napa, California, at the Meritage Resort, which is dedicated to Mary. And it was amazing to be with so many cardinals from around the world and archbishops and bishops and priests and nuns and every, so many different people involved in the new evangelization. In fact, I got to talk to a, a, a man there in his mid-30s. His name is Drew, who uh, had been an altar boy and hadn't been to church since he was 14. And he was there with his family on, a, I guess, some sort of um, a little mini vacation. And he said, I knew something was up when I saw all these cardinals and archbishops and, and everyone go, what is this? What is going on? And I got a chance to share with him and give him one of my books. But it is an amazing experience to be with so many people that everyone is so devoted to the Lord and to helping each other advance the cause. Uh, our cause is in the new evangelization. So shout out to John Mayer and to Christine and all the staff and to Tim Bush and, and uh, Father Robert Spitzer and all the people were, that were there. If I gave you the list of speakers, uh, including the, the majority leader of the House of Representatives and Scott Hahn and uh, Cardinal Mueller, all it just it was just stunning, uh, overwhelming. And the thing is, is they don't give you any, they don't cut you any slack. There may be three breakout sessions that you you every one of them would be amazing to go to. Uh, but one of the cool things we got to do at uh, at the Napa Institute is there's so many opportunities for conversation, extended breakfasts and and lunches and dinners where people can just sit outside and eat. Of course, in the beauty of Napa. Uh, but they have a wine tasting at five. But at nine o'clock at night, Deep Adventure Ministries got to uh, provide our cigars, the Seven Virtue cigars uh, sampler. You know, the four we have uh, we have them at our website, deepadventure.com, where the four cardinal virtues are medium blend cigars uh, representing the four cardinal virtues, and the three uh, theological virtues are the Maduros. And we handed out, I think, three hundred and fifty good quality cigars. To people, which was kind of just my way of saying, I want to talk to everybody. We basically got to have a handshake and a talk with so many pe people because we gave, gave out that gift on cigar night. So it's been a beautiful uh, uh, five or six days being there and now returning. We're coming to you today from Cocoa Beach, Florida. Uh, but we just, love, uh, we just love our fellow uh, adventurers in the new evangelization. If you want to see God move, if you want to see God at work, if you want to see the Lord really move. Uh, don't be saying, Lord, please do this. Lord, please do that. <clears throat> you should be saying, Lord, let me know your will. Let me abide in your will. Let me abandon myself to your will. Instead of bending God's will to ours, if you, get, if you just abandon yourself to his, <clears throat> it's like when my son Jeremiah was talking to me last night. I think it's 10 years, uh, it was 10 years uh, uh, in December 2017 when he was towed in uh, behind a jet ski into an 80-foot wave, one of the biggest waves ever surfed. And that wave forever changed his life. Uh, when you drop into an 80-foot wave, you've abandoned yourself. That's what I mean by abandonment. He had to ride, ride that wave for over a mile just to be able to kick out. That's abandonment to God's will. God's will is a wild adventure. Um, and uh, you, when you're in God's will, you get to see him move. Uh, when you're out of God's will, you can pray, and God will rescue you and save you and guide you and lead you. But when you totally just kind of let go and let God, oh my goodness, the things that happen are, are quite crazy. And uh, we have, so that's why we only try to have crazy guests on our show. And we have someone today that I got to meet in uh, Stillwater, Minnesota, just outside St. Paul about a month ago. I was there. I had, I had coffee in the morning with uh, Jeff Cavins, who I just love, the great Bible teacher of the Great Adventure Bible Series. And I said, I'm going to go to Stillwater. And he goes, you know what's there? And, he, and I go, no the best Catholic Bible bookstore in the world. And I go, I, I'm, that must have been, I said, yeah, I'm going down there. I was there several months ago and I picked up this really cool two volume set my wife bought for me as a, as a present on the early church. And like, yeah, you got to go down there. I go, yeah, I'm going to. And I walk in there and I'm just kind of walking around and stumbling around and looking at all these books. And I really just felt like I was in the Sistine <laughs> Vatican library or something. Not quite like that, but, uh, Oh, just lost with all these, I call them my friends, all the early church fathers and all the great authors of the Catholic Church. So we have as our guest today, the owner and proprietor of Loom Bookstores in Stillwater, Christopher Hagen. Aloha, Christopher. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Thank you very much, Bear. Did it I was look, a 
Go ahead. It was a pleasure to meet you in the bookstore, and uh, very surprising. I've had a fun time describing you to family. And friends. <laughs> uh oh. Okay, you got to tell me what you mean by that. That. Did okay. I look like a kid in a candy store or something, or what? Well, um, it was more that uh, you know, at the dinner table at night, kids ask, "Well, who came in the bookstore today?" And I said, "Well, there's this guy, and he claimed to be a black belt ninja tandem surfer motorcycle guy." <laughs> <laughs> and they had no category for what that would mean. <laughs> I think so. that's that's what the Lord has for us too. I mean, you're just this is you're this bookish sort of guy, you know, wears glasses. But you uh, you threw net. You you were on a commercial fishing boat. It sounds like in Alaska. So don't try yeah. to categorize what the Lord's up to. So yeah. So what, what, you know, before we get rolling on this whole, when I walked in there, did it look like I just showed up at Disneyland or something? I was, I just was like numb. It was such a beautiful beautiful store. Uh, but yes. before we get into that, this bookworm guy, Christopher, also has spent some time in Alaska, which Jeff Cavins and I are thinking about going to next year, by the way. What was that all about? How in the heck did you get hooked uh, to be a fisherman? Uh, so I was looking for ways to pay my way through college. Uh, I had some distant relative who'd gone to Alaska to work in the salmon fishing industry. And so I thought, uh, I like the outdoors. I like adventure. Um, and I just looked around, is there a way I can do this? And landed a job at a cannery in a remote village. Uh, and then, uh, so I spent two summers just working with the fish in the cannery and then six summers on fishing boats of various kinds. Um, just for a month, month and a half every summer. But you must've had some, I mean, every time you leave the safety of shore that you're on some sort of adventure. Oh, um, yes. What, what Were you like on that show? What is it called? The most the dangerous catch? catch? Deadliest uh, catch? Was right. It something like that? Well, tell us uh, a couple things that happened while you were on the boat. Well, let me, I would, when I tell people about it, I tell them not quite the deadliest catch, but the dangerous catch, uh, because the boats we were on were smaller than on that show. But yeah, you uh, leave shore and you're in that part of the river where it mixes with the ocean, the estuary. Oh, that's dangerous. And, very dangerous area. Right. Mm -hmm. And what's... Boiling tides and currents. Yeah. And yes, that caused yeah many stories. You also have about uh, you know hundreds of boats, hundreds of fishermen in this area all jockeying for the best place to put down their nets. And they get testy with each other and such. So lots of hot tempers. Um... And then lots of situations where you've got to do something right now or else something bad is going to happen. Um, so Give us maybe, an example of a couple like that. Well, so a hero moment would have been when uh, you, your net is about 300 yards long, uh, trailing out the back of your boat. So it is dragging your boat. You can really not drag the net. And there was a time when the line connecting the boat to the net had gotten uh, wrapped around a corner of the cabin of the fishing boat. Oh my, it's going to tip it over. Right. So then I had to, as a deckhand, just sort of scramble up to a place in the cabin where I could try and lift it around the um, what it was wrapped around. Suddenly realized, no, 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 I can't do that. There's too much tension. Oh my, it's about to give. And all I could do was jump and it snapped off the part of the cabin it was wrapped around and whizzed underneath me, uh, and then the boat was stable. So I actually didn't. If you had gotten, if you had gotten, you know, somehow wrapped up in that net, you'd have been dead. I would have been swung, knocked right off into the water, and uh, it's pretty hard to get back in the boat. Once and if you, but if you had been uh, hooked up into that net somehow, your ankle caught or something, then you're dead. R right. You're stopping that. Not good. Yeah, yeah. That sounds like a fun day fishing, tranquil, peaceful. <laughs> so, so you were. You you were going for you were going for salmon. Uh, well, yeah. give us another uh, another uh, instance like that. Um, you said I think you said something about I, I remember once just sailing, and uh, my my uh, my propeller getting caught. You mentioned something about a propeller. My propeller got all caught up in a lobster trap, and it's kind of right. sketchy because I'm by myself. I had to dive under my boat and uh, cut away cut it away. Unfortunately for the lobster fisherman, out of my propeller. And you know I've got a, I've got I'm not anchored because I'm in deep water and I've got a I've got a uh, what what they call a 
the um, a rope trailing out the back, you know, with the with the several knots about every few meters. And of course, the yeah. last knot on that rope is called the bitter end. That's where the word bitter end comes from. If you don't grab that knot, your 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 boat's going to sail away without you. So that yes. was pretty sketchy. But you said you had a situation similar to that too in Alaska. Yeah. So um, with so many fishermen, so many nets. Uh, it's not unlikely that you get your prop wrapped in someone else's net and someone else's net. Uh, yeah. yeah wow. That is close quarters. Yeah. Uh, very close. And then you have the tide and the river current. And sometimes those are at odds. Sometimes they're going together. So if you get stuck in a net, you've got to free yourself right away because then you, you're, you're drifting all over the place. So, uh, the boat we were on that year had a, a giant outboard, so you could go down the back of, the, get on the back of the boat, kind of shimmy down the housing for the engine. That and sounds get, safe. Yeah, really safe. At least the um, the engine tilts up, you know, out of the water, so the prop is out of the water, covered in all the net, uh, and you get your knife out. All fishermen carry a knife on them so that they can cut themselves out of nets. Hopefully, cut of, the net, not yourself, right? Yes. Yep. And uh, so I just was frantically trying to cut away as much of the webbing around the net or around the prop. Uh, but my captain, recognizing how tense of a situation it was, um, he has a tendency to sometimes start the prop while the motor's still out of the water, while the prop's out of the water. And I had just freed the net, the prop from the net, and told him, you know, it's free. And he started lowering the engine back into the water with me still on it and almost started the propeller, uh, which if it had started, I was straddling that thing, and it I don't think I would have survived. Well, listen, we're talking with Chris Hagen. He's the pri proprietor for Loom Bookstores. We are going to be right back with more of that adventure on the Bear Wozniak adventure. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. My producer is going to be really upset. Bill Snyder is going to be, you overran that segment by a full minute. And I did, I confess I did. But when you're talking about a guy, you know, hanging himself over the edge of a boat, uh, cutting away a net with the engine st starting, uh, you don't cut away. So apologize to my, to my engineers and producers. But that's just the nature of this guy we have on our show. It's so funny because I, I met Christopher Hagen. He's the owner of Loom Bookstores in Stillwater, Minnesota. Uh, I walked into this store, and I just felt like I had I, there was a surprise party. <laughs> yes, I'd, I'd been in there just briefly uh, several months earlier and, and bought a bought a, a book. My my wife and I were just kind of walking by, and we stopped in for a second. I really didn't know. I thought I was looking at a small little section of religious books of s several months ago. But when I had breakfast with Jeff Cavins. Earlier that day, and said, "I'm going down to the Stillwater to see to this bookstore." He goes, "You mean the best Catholic bookstore in the history of the universe?" And I go, "Yeah, I guess it is." And I walked in there, and I'm looking at all these books, and some of them I've only heard about, never seen. And uh, and uh, I I got to meet uh, Christopher Hagen, who's our guest today, who's much more than just a bookworm. Uh, he has lived a life of adventure, having worked uh, his way through college by by working up in the commercial fishing area up in Alaska. Uh, so, so Christopher Hagen, welcome back to the show. Thank you. Yeah, so when I walked in there and I started looking at some of the books you had, it's really kind of tragic. It's like, I, I really would love to just come up there and sit in your bookstore and write my next book. And I'm quite serious about that. Just to sit in that corner over there and just sit and just I'm, work on my next book. It just, I just feel like you're in the company of great friends, you know, or at least... Maybe they wouldn't, don't want to be my friend, but I would love to be the friend of all those authors there. So, and then you saw me kind of looking sort of lost in the maze, and you, you came over and started talking to me. But one of the things, when my wife decided to buy me the books that she did yeah. as a gift, because, you know, sometimes I feel guilty buying myself books, you gave me the card. What does the card say, the different excuses for buying some of those books? What are some of the excuses? Uh, so we have cards that uh, say five ways to explain your recent book purchase to your spouse. And. That's kind of like guys who love to ride Harleys or want to want to buy a fishing boat or something. Let's let's hear them. Do you remember what they are? Uh, some of them are. Uh, I was reason number five, I think. 
Uh, that was the I think give up and just confess. no no. Uh, what she her, the one she gave me was this is your Christmas birthday and anniversary and Valentine present all in one. <laughs> yep. Yep. What what are some of the other reasons? Uh, you know, this is an investment in my spiritual growth. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's a good. That's a good excuse. I, I need it for research. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. We do have lots of professors who are buying books, so that one's somewhat legitimate. Well, these books, for the most part, are used books, right? Yeah, yeah, we're a used bookstore. You're going to hate what I did to my... The, see, I'm going to hold up for those of you who watch on YouTube. By the way, we need about 600 more subscribers to our YouTube channel. And if we do that, YouTube says they're going to really ramp up their promotion of our YouTube channel. Our YouTube channel is called Bear Wozniak. So please go and subscribe, and you can actually see Christopher and I instead of uh, just listening to us on, on, on EW10 Radio. But... Check out this book. It's the Ancient Christian Commentary on Scriptures. You see my paper clips I use there, Chris? Uh, they're obnoxiously big. Yeah, that's so the wind doesn't turn my pages when I sit out on my lanai. But you're going to okay. see something here that you're going to just hate. I've underlined all over this book already. Oh, look at you. Don't you hate that as a bookstore? Well, if you're able to die a martyr or in some other famous fashion, then you're... <laughs> Underlining very valuable. So. Otherwise, it's not. Otherwise, it destroys the value of that book. You just messed up that book. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, and and I know several people that are just like me. I can't really read without underlining. I don't feel like I've read a book unless I do. Yeah. Like, I, I'm on an airplane. And like I, I got a book to read. How am I going to read a book without a pen? And got right. a big one off of someone. So the this. So we were. So let's talk about. Uh, before we get in more about the bookstore, let's talk about you. Uh, and your your uh, your walk with the Lord and your conversion experience, the mm -hmm. great adventurer, great commercial fisherman of of Alaska, raised in Minnesota, I perceive. Uh, yep. Okay, so start there. Start there. Uh, I was actually born in Nashville, Tennessee. Beautiful, uh, beautiful town. Yeah, I moved away when I was second or third grade, so I don't have uh, strong memories of the area. And second grade was the three best years of my life, so. That's a wow. very great time for you. To, that's a significant time in someone's life. So my uh, parents were evangelical, so I was raised uh, kind of reformed evangelical. Uh, my father worked for InterVarsity Press, which is an evangelical publishing house. Which is the publishing house that published this book, right? There you go. That but, series. Came but from a lot that. of. But it was a, a compendium with a lot of Catholic scholars. Right. We'll talk more about this book later. That I love the series of books that I love. Yeah, go ahead. So he was at InterVarsity Press. Right. So he's a book well, guy, too. Yes. Uh, okay. he, he was the business manager, so he did the different kind of books, the one with all the numbers. <laughs> the books, yeah. He juggled the books. Okay. Right. And uh, that was in the Chicago area. So I <laughs> adolescence was spent in the Chicago area. Um, my, I had a dynamic, wonderful youth pastor then. Um, and, you know, I took the faith as my own in adolescence and high school and had an interest in issues of evolution, philosophy, just sort of why is it true what we say we believe. Um, I came to Minnesota, where I still am for college, uh, and that's where I met my wife. So um, uh, would you like me, how much more would you like to hear about the college? And well, I, I want to hear about, I want to hear it. Okay. So if, you, if you were just, just uh you got just about four minutes left, but I mean, I want to hear before we go to the next topic. But go, I want to hear the real stuff. Now, I don't, I don't want to hear the high, I don't want to hear the CV yeah, version of it. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I kind of went to the college I went to, which was a secular college, somewhat with a missionary idea. Uh, and as you can imagine, a lot of the professors and uh, fellow students and such uh, took a pretty dim view of Christianity. So it was a bit of a further refining, further understanding why I believe what I believe, is it worth holding on to? Mm. Uh, in the midst of that, I met my wife, though she wasn't my wife when I met her. Uh, that happens a lot. <laughs> I hope most of the time. <laughs> uh, we met at an InterVarsity Christian Fellowship group that was on the campus. Uh, she was uh, also an evangelical. And falling in love uh, in our courtship, I uh, asked her to marry me. She said, yes, we're engaged, and we don't want to have children right away when we're married. What are we going to do? Um, so this is the first step that led us further towards Christ, further into the Catholic Church. Um, 
she was against all kinds of chemical forms of birth control. She's just she's a, a natural lady. She's like, I, no, 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 I don't want to do that. Uh, yeah, we why, talk. Yeah, go, why, why, uh, why uh, try to destroy your your, your body, <laughs> basically right, by, right. by 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 chemical contraceptive? Okay. Right. So she was against that. I was a bit appalled because I just thought everybody used the pill to not have children um, for symbolic and kind of uh, love reasons we didn't want to use a barrier barrier methods um, like condoms and such because we thought why would you put something between yourself in the midst of your love um, thought it was something like you know putting a plastic bag over your head to kiss it just no 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 so well well how are we gonna not have children well my wife was perusing the local used bookstore in the town that we were going to college in and in the free in the bargain bin free book area there's this book called the art of natural family planning with a cover that looked like it was right out of the 70s and my wife picked it up read it and she's like this is what we're going to do we're going to do this the natural way but we need more training so she f contacted the organization that published that book which is a catholic organization we learned natural family planning through them and through their literature became convinced that uh, contraception was immoral, not just unhealthy, let's say, uh, but actually immoral. So we were in this curious position. Uh, we agreed with what the Catholic Church was teaching about contraception. We were on board with that. We were eager to get married and practice it. But we did not want to become Catholic at all. We did not think the Catholic Church was anything special. Okay, so, so let's take let's take a break here, or I'm really going to be in trouble next segment with the, with the engineer. We're talking with Christopher Haig, and he is the proprietor of Loom Bookstores in Stillwater, Minnesota, probably one of my favorite bookstores I've ever been in, in the whole universe of the whole world, or LD Multiverse. I love his, uh, his used Catholic bookstore and incredible books um, are there. And we'll go a little bit deeper into probably Humana Vitae, I think, is where we're going, and uh, Catholic teaching on contraceptive care and how that opened that, that understanding of, of the anthropology of, of man and God's love for man open the door for him to consider more deeply, maybe for the first time, the Catholic faith. This is Bear Wozniak with the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be right back. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Uh, we are so thankful for Matt Meeks, Colleen Monroe, Ryan... Thomas and Matt Smith for helping us develop our new website, which we launched five days ago. And Matt Meeks and his team, of course, are do the Archdiocese of Los Angeles and the Napa Institute's uh, social media and web design. And we're so thrilled with the work that they're doing. It's still a little bit of a work in progress, but we want to invite you to go to deepadventure.com and join our, our mug club. And if you're a man, you're welcome to join Bears Man Cave. Bears Man Cave is a private Facebook group that you uh, that we give you access to when you join, uh, to subscribe to it, and uh, we do we, we post anything from John Wayne to John Paul II, and the men really get gritty with each other and work with each other to uh, to challenge, equip, and mobilize each other in in the in the will of the Lord. And every two or three weeks, whenever we kind of feel like it, we have this kind of random time together, a video meetup where we use the Zoom. Uh, video uh, technology, and so we may get 20 guys online, and we're, we're talking story, reading through one of my books, Deep Adventure of the Way of Heroic Virtue, what we're reading right now. And the reason we do that is, uh, read through the book is, we may only read one page, but it's just a great way to get dig, to dig down and talk about something that's significant. And then in that process of modeling the man cave, several of these men now have started their own man caves in their, maybe at the local pub or coffee shop for breakfast or on the deck of their back of their house having a cigar and a shot of whiskey but talking about something other than work and politics and in sports and it's a way for men to invite other men to join up in, in a dialogue without saying you want to go to the church basement with me and go to a that man as you program it's kind of like the thing before the thing uh, where you can uh, evangelization through friendship and then you can invite them to get uh, uh, even more deeply formed by going through a That Man Is You program or something like that. Uh, but we love the man cave concept. And so you can go to our deepadventure.com and sign up for that. And also make sure and go to the Bear Wozniak YouTube channel 
and subscribe. It's really important you press the subscribe button because YouTube says they're going to blow up our, our channel if we can get about 700 more subscriptions. And so while you're listening to the radio show uh, on EW10 or any of the uh, uh, you know podcasts, you could also be going to our YouTube channel and looking at, at, at our guest and myself as we talk. Our guest today is Christopher Hagen. He's the proprietor of Loom Bookstores in Stillwater, Minnesota. I, I wandered into that bookstore about I don't know, maybe nine months ago, and then I was there again about a month ago, and wow, used Catholic books, and I was just, just, just in awe. And Chris saw that I was kind of confused and lost, and and I, he guided me to some this one particular set of books that I was really looking for. We'll talk about it later. But Christopher Hagen, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Great to be here. So you you were on your way to uh, you ha- you were about to get married, and you didn't want to use contraceptions. Uh, yep. and well, you, you thought the pill was just fine, but your wife was like, I'm not gonna let my body be destroyed by some chemical. Right. And you didn't want to use condoms, another form of contraceptive care. And she discovered uh, natural family planning. Uh, and, uh, and she, be, and she discovered not only the technique, but the Catholic moral teaching about it. This is the 50 year anniversary of Humana Vitae. You want right. to touch on that a little bit for us and what that meant to you as an ev- evangelical discovering really the anthropological and theological basis for that discussion? Yeah, the anthropological aspects of that didn't come to later for me. What actually was very compelling for me at the time was learning that all groups of Christians taught that contraception was immoral uh, up until the early 20th century, and that since that time, the Catholic Church is the only one that has not changed its teaching on that. And that hit me very um, hard because I realized, you know, if a teaching is true, it's not going to change. If uh, teaching is of the Holy Spirit, it's not going to go one way and then another way later. You know, once the Holy Spirit led the church to understand Christ's divinity and such and um, consubstantial with the Father, that's not changing. It doesn't come up for debate again in later centuries. So it was that aspect of, you know, what Humana Vitae affirmed that traditional teaching that I was like, this is probably a teaching of the Holy Spirit. And I was coming at this as a Protestant, not as a Catholic. Um, later, after I converted and read Theology of the Body and such, the anthropological understanding of that um, is came. But I wasn't there at that time. But it's a cool, It's a, your, your, your thought is very cool that you know, with Catholic Church, uh, moral and doctrinal teaching don't change. Uh, we may affirm things like, for example, uh, the Immaculate Conception may be more confirmed as time goes on. And sometimes right. uh, we may say uh, it's kind of like an acorn growing into a tree, but everything is always, you know, we may unfold it, unpack it, uh, a moral teaching a little bit more, but we, right. we don't change our moral or doctrinal teaching. And that's really interesting to me that that really struck you like that. Where did... Where did that thought uh, lead you then next? Nowhere closer to the Catholic Church. <laughs> it just became kind of a, huh, I wonder why the Catholics have that right. Right. Because all of the prejudices uh, and unexamined um, critiques of Catholicism that many evangelicals had, I still had. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, it's I, like Fulton I, Sheen said, if I believe most of what Protestants thought I believe, I wouldn't be a Catholic either, right? That's right. So there's all these right. misconceptions. Yeah. So the Catholic step came after we were married. Um, and a year into our marriage, we both read a book. Now, uh, while we were engaged, we read a great book called A Severe Mercy by Sheldon Van Oken. And that's the story of he and his wife's, it's an autobiographical story, great love, Conversion to the Christian faith when he was a student of C.S. Lewis's in Oxford. So this has taken place in the 60s. Um, and then his wife. No, I should not spoil it. <laughs> but anyway, autobiographical. It had a big No, you could spoil it. You could spoil it. <laughs> OK. Uh, his wife dies um, not too long into their marriage, about the same time that C.S. Lewis's wife died. Mm. So um, Sheldon Van Oken and C.S. Lewis corresponded about that. Uh, but their story had a big impact on us wanting to create a very solid, thoughtful marriage relationship. Praise God. Wow. 
It had nothing about Catholicism in it, but he wrote a sequel about his life after his wife had died. And that was the book that we read after we were married. Um, and that book is called Under the Mercy, if I'm remembering correctly. And he became Catholic at the time when the Anglicans were looking at ordaining women um, to be ministers. And for the author, Sheldon Vanneken, he just said, well, how can this change if the Holy Spirit has been teaching something different for 2,000 years? And for him, he said, that's why I should become Catholic. And again, that was a similar um, mm -hmm. idea that I had encountered. It's exact in the right book for you to read. Exact yeah. right statement. It's so phenomenal. My okay. wife read the book first. The Holy Spirit got to her, and she's like, you've got to read this. And then we got to talk. Really? So, wow. I very distinctly remember, I finished reading it in our living room. I was on the couch. I closed the book, turned to her and said, so you want to become Catholic? She's like, yes. And I did too. Wow. What's the name of the book again? And the author? Uh, the author is Sheldon Van Oaken, V-A-N-A-U-K-E-N. -E uh, the first book is A Severe Mercy, and I believe the sequel is Under the Mercy. Wow. And so... What an amazing moment for a husband and wife at the same basic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the wow. same time. And so, what was your what? What steps? What do you do? To, okay, I want to become Catholic. You just go start showing up at church. It's like it's a different. So, what what do you do next? Um. So, and I will say this also. This was one of the first times in my life that sort of my spirit said yes, while my brain was still kind of going, "Wait a minute, what about solo scriptura?" Well. Yeah, okay, let's talk. Okay, before we even do that, and we're going to give me one or two things in that book that com felt gave you the compelling reason felt uh, in your heart. It was more of a heart thing uh, yeah, yeah. that you needed to become Catholic. What, what, what was, do you remember, or was it just a lifting of your soul? Well, it was just, it was one thing. It was this idea, again, hitting me, ah. which group of Christians shows a consistency of doctrine throughout all the years, um, was he at quoting that, the early church fathers? Well, at the time, I think he was just simply saying, this has been the t teaching of the church um, about who is to be ordained. And I wasn't against women ministers at the time or anything like that. And in a Protestant context, I'm still not. But anyway, um, it was just this recognition that, you know, if the Holy Spirit is really guiding one group of Christians, it's not going to change. Development, mm -hmm. yes. So it was, I think it was just one essay in this book, Under the Mercy, where he talked about that. And that was enough that my heart leapt and said, I want to be part of that group. And you know what's so cool is that you wanted truth. You yes. wanted God's will. And so many of us just kind of want our agenda. And we kind of put up this wall to the conviction of the Holy Spirit. And uh, so much of what blocks people from becoming Catholic is just that... Uh, it's just, just that. They've, they've, they have these preconceived notions, and regardless of what they hear the actual teaching of the church is, they want to cling to that. We're talking with Christopher Hagen. I loved uh, meeting Christopher about a month ago. I was in his bookstore, Bloom Bookstore, in Stillwater, Minnesota. You, you should go there before you go to a Twins game or anything else in, in the Twin Cities. That bookstore, you know, it's not like there's a million books in there, but every one of them is like packed with dynamite, uh, just a beautiful bookstore. Uh, and so I said, we got to have you on the show. Uh, this is Bear Wozniak with the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be right back with more with Christopher Hagen. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. We have Christopher Hagen. He is the, uh, the proprietor for Loom Bookstores in Stillwater, Minnesota, Catholic Used Bookstore. Uh, which I just have fallen in love with. I've been there a couple times. The first time I was just in for a moment, I didn't realize really the scope of the level of books that he had there. I just thought I'd found the little religious section of the bookstore last time I went in. And now I really realize it's almost primarily Catholic, really Catholic, great Catholic literature. And, uh, hey, Christopher, I got a question for you. Yeah. Christopher Hagen, the proprietor. So if I get my books all used looking, do you think you'd carry a couple of my books in your store if I... You know, I make them, sit them out in the sun or make them look a little weathered. Would you, would you carry a couple of my books? You don't need to do that. We have some <laughs> favorite authors that will put their books in here. Um, 
even if they're not used. That's so patronizing of you, but thank you. But you know, I got. I was just about to say, if you got, I I uh, have two books that I really, that, that are really people really love them. Uh, one is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Excuse me. One is uh, Deep in the Wave: A Surfing Guide to the Soul, which was pu- published by Hachette, which was one of the kind of one of the major secular publishers, uh, their Center Street division, and. It was because I won a world title that I got an open door and uh, world title in surfing that they kind of opened the door for me. Uh, but it's a, it's a great, really, the purpose of the book is to take people along a, a story of adventure and real life kind of biography, autobiography. But it's it's patterned after the uh, the uh, contemplative uh, path the journey that we've learned through the Catholic Church from from John Paul II to uh, John of the Cross to Teresa of Avila. And so, but it's. It's written in a way that's kind of gut wrenching and that sort of thing, and with with not only the adventure but the issue things that have occurred in my life. And then the other book is more of a Catholic book, uh, published by Franciscan Media, "Deep Adventure: The Way of Heroic Virtue." But I still use the same narrative approach mm-hmm. to uh, to guide people into uh, the seven virtues, the four cardinal virtues, and the three lo- three theological virtues. But I use this kind of interesting thing, like at the Napa Institute, a lot of people come up to me because they love the book. Um, of all ages, but a couple of fathers came up and said, I uh, t- told me that about their sons. And I go, you know what? Take this book and read it with your son because mm. the stories are something they can understand too, but don't just give it to them, read it to read it with them. But what's cool about it is people like the books because about every 20, 15 pages or 10 pages in the book, there's this ongoing narrative of an, of an open ocean rescue that I did. Uh, so you kind of get to watch, you look forward to skipping through the rest of the book so you can Hear what happens at the end. So it's kind of a cool, it's a cool read. And it, but it, but I'm a big um, fan of the, the of the virtues because I think it allows men, especially yep. all of us, but especially men, uh, practical traction in their life. We're talking with Christopher Hagen. Christopher, you got to hurry up, man. We're, we got this is our last segment. Better put it in the fast forward. So uh, you 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 experience uh, this kind of like oh no, I'm going to become a Catholic sort of moment. Yeah. And then what was the next step? Uh call up the Catholic parish in town and say, how do you have a new members class? Um, what do you do? And uh, that's the way we started because we didn't know Catholics. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's so cool. And uh, we heard there's this thing called RCIA who knows, knows what that is. Uh, it starts in the fall. So I think this was in the spring. So we had the summer to go kind of, what are we doing? Um, the pastor of that parish had to pick sponsors for us again because we didn't know anybody but that's so that, crazy that's so cool yeah my my wife was just completely on board um f- she is interested in truth and such but not to the degree i am and so i was the one who that summer was okay scott Hahn, uh catholic answers yeah. uh <laughs> i was, the one who was just trying to power through all this reading and <laughs> I was, you know, my heart was on the side of Catholics at that point. So um, it was more discovering all these reasons to be Catholic that I'd never encountered before. And then seeing some of the errors of some of what I believed before. Um, As you know, evangelicals align with Catholics on many things. uh, But there are some things that they just... Well, you you mentioned earlier Sola Scriptura, and I think you're probably going to go to Sola Fide. Was that also... That, yep. That just, was, why don't you Why don't you describe those two issues and how you overcame those, or what? How you truth pierced through that? Solo scripture was easy. I believe it was in Rome, Sweet Home, Scott Hahn's book, uh, where he describes fielding a question from one of his students when he was a Protestant, which was basically, you know, where is sola scriptura in Scripture? And I remember reading that and just <laughs> blew my mind because I had grown up evangelical, so I had read the Bible and knew the Bible, and I knew that Sola Scriptura was not in there. And I just couldn't believe it. I was, how, how did I think this was true all this time? Mm. Um, so Sola Scriptura fell pretty easily. Mm. And this is not to disregard the arguments that evangelicals have to support Sola Scriptura. Yeah, and we, but, love, we love Scripture. The Catholic not, Church is right. the one that canonized the Scripture. We're the ones that gave it the table of contents, so... We love yeah. scripture, but we we also like I, I love, every morning I read I share the the Catholic Catechism on my Ocean Sunrise Catechism on Facebook Live, and uh, but you really shouldn't read the scripture without reading the Catechism alongside it. And so, what was the other area then? Solo fide that uh, we're saved by faith alone, and 
for that, I had read uh, Robert Sungenis's book, Not by Faith Alone, and you know, a very thick book that just goes through scripturally why Catholics believe it's faith and works. And I just found it utterly convincing and saw the arguments that I had grown up with as very weak. You know, um, and, and it's weak in our own in our own in our own anthropology in our own conscience. We know it's not true. We just you get it right. in your gut level, but. You know, the only place that faith alone appears in Scripture is it is not by faith alone that we are saved, but by works also. Martin Luther hated that book. He put it, he threw it out for a while, you know, and then they eventually put it in an appendix and then added it back to the Bible. So it's kind of tough, you know, to, to argue yeah. with. If you're going to try to argue from a uh, text, it's Scripture. There it is. But so then you begin this conversion. You, you and your wife uh, uh, came to Catholicism, and, you, and now you have, uh, uh, how many children do you have now? We, we have seven seven living and children. I, you know, I got to tell you, Chris, I, I love you. I love your wife. I love your family. I love your spirit. Uh, here is a man who owns a bookstore, and he was converted through reading of books. Uh, yes. I was talking to my son, Jeremiah, last night. He's with FEMA. He's one of the main guys out in, out in Puerto Rico. And uh, he was talking about truth. And I was remembering St. Augustine saying that, yeah, how he, he in FEMA you're you're dealing with a lot of issues, you know, and you gotta you're on trying to figure out what's true, what isn't true, as far as mm. supporting and helping the people. And he said, I just when I discover what is the truth, I just speak the truth and let it stand on its own. Then I go, yeah, Saint Augustine, truth is like a lion. You just speak it. it you know, truth doesn't need to be defended. It's like a a roaring lion. Just let it loose. So, yeah. but I so I want to talk with you a little bit, man. We're almost to the end of our show. Like when I walked in there, and I started seeing these books. And I saw one volume of this book. I was talking, I interview Mike Aquilina a lot. I love Mike, just love him so much. And every time I ask him a question, he goes, well, I should look it up in my ancient co Christian commentary on scripture. Uh -huh. And I go, well, you're so lucky to have that. You know, only smart people get to have that, that book. He goes, well, it's, a, it's on the early church fathers, but it's actually, I think, about 24 volumes. So I walk in there and I see, oh. This is because I've been looking at it on Amazon. You know, I go, I, I can't buy okay. that. I can't justify buying that book. I have about, you know, I have lot. I have tons of books. I could probably open a used bookstore myself. Yeah. But I, but beyond that, I also have about forty books that are waiting for me to read. You know. Yeah. But I do read. I read hours every day. But anyway, uh, oh, this is the book Mike Aquilina said I should get. It has <laughs> the answers to everything I ever wanted to know. And I I go, oh, too bad. He's only got five or six volumes. And then you and I got to talk, and then you go, oh, no, I got the whole set. And I go, oh, uh, one of these days. And then we, my wife goes, Cindy goes, I'm buying it for you for your Christmas, birthday, anniversary, and Valentine's <laughs> present. And they came. But you know what's really sad? They came to my house. You shipped them for only $10. It came as three vault, three boxes. But yeah. one day at a time, they came at separate times. Oh. I was like, oh, please. Yeah. let the whole So I'm reading through the, the whole section on the book of Acts. The, and what it is, this is the commentary by the early church fathers. Uh, it takes the, the, the writings of each, uh, it takes one scripture, it takes a scripture verse, and it's like the thickest commentary on scripture from Jerome to Athanasius to Chrysostom to Gregory, both of the Gregories, and, and oh, I love it. But um, if people want to get a hold of you, do you ever go out and try to find a book for people that they're looking for, or how do they see, if they call you, what do they say? I'm looking for a book, and what do you what, what do you tell them? Uh, when when people come to us looking for books, it's mostly because they have not been able to find them elsewhere. I wish I was magic and could find everybody's books, but most of the time I have to tell them, you know, I haven't seen that book in five years, uh, and you just need to pray, <laughs> and we'll <laughs> let you know if we get a copy in. But I love your bookstore. There's still, you know, we got 30 seconds left. The, the bookstore in Stillwater, down by the river. Beautiful. You can see if you're watching on YouTube, you can see how old the walls are, the brick walls in the background of his office. And you were so warm to me. I looked, I really felt like a kook walking into a surf shop for the first time. You know, when, when they, I should say it in that derogatory term, but when people first walk in a surf shop, they have no idea. They smell paraffin wax. They smell the surfboard resin. They look at all these surfboards and stuff and they walk out with a, with a pair of, uh, with a set of surf trunks or something. But I walked in there, I go, I want all of this, and I really do mean it. It may be because I've really been praying about it. If you put up with me, I might just come there and write my next book. Seriously. You'd be welcome to. I mean, sit in that little corner there and just you know, work on it. We've been talking with Christopher Hagen. The name of the book's for, what is your, what is your website, website again, Christopher? 
loombooks.com, L-O-O-M-E, books.com. Okay, and my, my engineer is going to be mad at me. My social media person is going to be mad at me because I didn't promote my deepadventure.com, brand new website and all that other stuff. So, But we got to go. Uh, it's just so much like the, the new evangelization. You know, you, you kind of hit the ground running once you say yes to the Lord. This is Bear Wozniak with a Bear Wozniak adventure with Christopher Hagen, my co-adventure guide. We will see you next week. Don't, don't forget to go to YouTube to watch, uh, to watch the show. Uh, and if you, after you've listened to it on radio, you can share the show uh, by sharing the YouTube. Christopher, thanks for being on our show. Loved it, Bear. Thank you very much. Okay, until next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha and viva Cristo Rey.